Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Chakras, and in today's video, as you can see, we have three digital pianos here stacked up in front of me. On the bottom, we have the Roland FP30X. In the middle, we have the Yamaha P125, and on the top, we have Kawai's ES110. And all the three of these fall into the sub $800 price class. The Kawai ES110 can be purchased for as low as $629 US dollars. I've seen that for sale online. Just Google shopping tab and Google ES110, and you should see it. Um, the Yamaha P125 is around 640 US dollars, and the Roland FP30X is the most expensive, coming in at around 740 US dollars, or 750. Um, so there's about a hundred dollar price discrepancy between these two, and we will be comparing all three of them in today's video. Now this won't be a super in-depth video because there are three digital pianos, so I'm probably not going to be going through every single sound, I'm not going to be talking about every single positive and negative quality of all three of these, but what I do have on my channel is is a full in-depth review of each of these individually. So if you're interested in really learning more about one particular model here, if you really want to know about the FP30X or the 125 or the ES110, I have done very in-depth solo reviews on all three of those. But this is more of a sort of a brief rundown comparison between the three. It probably won't be a very short video. You already have seen the uh, length of the video when you've clicked on it on YouTube. Um, sitting here, I have no idea how long it's going to be yet, but we will just see. There is going to be a lot of a lot to talk about. So first of all, before I get around to playing these and talking about the sounds and talking about the action, and the playing experience, I first wanted to talk about some of the more physical things, the build quality, the peripherals that they come with, and things like that. So for starters, what I'm going to do is just turn them off because I did want to talk about the noise that the action makes. Um, so I'm just going to turn these all off really quickly. I did have them all on. And, um, but from here, let's start off with build quality. So what is the build quality of all of them like? The, the quality of the plastic and the, the build of the frame? Well, honestly, it's pretty much about the same on all three. Um, I think that all three of them have a pretty equivalent build quality. Um, the, they're all pretty stout and made of plastic. Um, so that you're not going to find any wood and metal on an instrument of this price class. Um, but you will find, what, what you will find is a pretty sturdy plastic case that shouldn't really give you any problems structurally. I've actually taken the Kawai ES110 with me on the road, not to perform, but just to bring with me as a practice instrument when I'm away from the studio. And it's been pretty reliable, and it has served that purpose very, very well. And I assume you could do the same perfectly fine with the 125 and the FP30X too. Um, so there's nothing really inherently wrong with the build quality of any of these. They're nothing phenomenal, but they're definitely nothing terrible, and the build quality is fine. Um, something else I wanted to talk about is the um, the noise the action makes. All th all digital pianos will have some amount of action thumpy noise, and my mics do tend to magnify this, so they might all end up sounding the same. Um, but I what I do want to say is one positive thing about the FP30X is, and this is something I forgot to mention in my full review of it, is that the the noise the action makes. While I'm not entirely a fan of the action of the FP30, the amount of noise it makes is actually very quiet and very respectable. Um, the noise of the P125's action and the ES110's action, although still respectable, is definitely a bit louder and more noticeable than that of the FP30X. When you push the keys down, it's very quiet, and when you let them go, it's a little bit louder, but still pretty quiet. My mics might be making that a bit louder, but believe me, it's pretty quiet in real life. So is the P125 when you push the keys down. Very nice, quiet thunk. And we let them go. Also pretty quiet thunk. The Kawaii ES110 when you push the keys down, it's a bit more of a louder thunk. And when you let the keys go, they kind of bounce a little bit, but that's typical with Kawaii's RH action. This is the RH compact action from Kawaii. Yamaha uses the GH3 action, and Roland uses the PHA4 action. However, the amount of noise that an action makes isn't indicative of its overall quality, and we'll talk more about the action later on in the video. Now I think I'm going to turn on all three of these instruments once again, just so they're up and running when it's time for me to actually play them. And once I turn on the ES110, I'll talk about the peripherals they come with. So of course, all three of them come with a power supply. That's pretty much a given. I don't think any of them can run on batteries. Bit of a missed opportunity, but they're a little bit too big to put on a, put on your lap, and they'd probably need D-cell batteries, so it's understandable why. Um, but they all come with a music desk. And the music desk that the Kawai and Yamaha come with, I have right here. And I also have the one for the Roland. I'm trying to grab them with one hand, and it's not going very well. Here we go. So 
This is the Yamaha Music Desk. It's a simple black slab of plastic. Here is Kawaii's Music Desk. It is also a simple black slab of plastic. They are equally functional and they are also of relatively equal widths um, as well, or lengths, whatever you want to say. They're both pretty long and wide. Then you have Roland's, which because I got the white FP30X, you have a white um, slab of plastic here. The build quality, oddly enough, is actually a little more stout than the other two, um, but equally functional. And also you can see that if I bring in the Yamaha's music desk, just for comparison, you can see that the Roland music desk is not as wide as the Yamaha or the Kawaii's music desk. It's not dramatically short, but I think everyone can agree that the wider the music desk, the better. Although many of us do use music um, on our iPads and digital music, a lot of us also still use print music. And I think it's a lot nicer to have, say, a four page piece of music all laid out with your four pages so you don't have to turn rather than being forced to put just a book and have to turn pages mid performance. I prefer being able to lay out my sheet music. So, those are the music desks that they all come with. They're all equally functional, I think. Um, and that's that. Let me put them away. It's a little awkward because they don't really stack that well together. I think that's good enough, though. And now it's time to talk about the pedals that they come with because all three of these come with a damper pedal. And since there's three, it's a little awkward, so I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab those and then we'll talk about them. In order from bottom to top for damper pedals, you'll see here that the Roland's damper pedal is a simple little plastic square thing. All three of these do have an optional upgraded higher quality pedal, um, and you can also get a triple pedal version for all three of these instruments too. But the one that the Roland comes with out of the box is just this simple basic flat thing. On some floor surfaces, it's pretty good and it doesn't move, but on carpet like it's on right now, it wanders around all over the place. The Yamaha is also pretty similar. You've got a very simple, slightly lighter weight little uh, little clicker pedal thing and again there's an optional higher pedal quality higher quality pedal and a triple pedal you can get for the p125 but one of these is not like the other and this is the pedal that the Kawaii es110 comes with straight out of the box um, it's a beautiful damper pedal one of my favorites in the piano industry especially in this price class the feel of the pedal itself is amazing you've got these big sticky rubber feet that don't really move around on any surface maybe smooth dusty concrete it might not work on but carpet, any other wood floor, stuff like that. It seems to work very, very well. The underside of this is solid metal. And it's just, it's fantastic. It's amazing. Um, and I absolutely love it. One thing I'd like to know, I have a question for all of you. Is it possible to chain one damper pedal to make it go to multiple different instruments? Because it is rather annoying to have three different pedals all over the floor that I have to choose and use for each of these. So throughout this video, you will probably see me mess up on the pedaling uh, at one point or another because I'm using the wrong pedal for the instrument. I tend to gravitate towards this one because it's so lovely. Um, so if it's possible, and I haven't tried it at all, so maybe it is totally easily possible. But if it's possible to chain one pedal into multiple keyboards at once, let me know. That might be kind of cool. There's probably some reasons it wouldn't be possible, but I'm just asking you all because that would make my life a lot easier. I think there's a couple more things I wanted to talk about before we get on to the playing experience. And one of those is the user interface of these instruments. We'll be seeing more of this throughout the video, so maybe I could have left it for later, but I'm thinking about it right now, so I figured I'd talk about it. All three of these instruments have a pretty minimalistic user interface. If you look at the ES110, you'll see there's, what, seven buttons, eight buttons, and a volume slider up there. For the P125, you have a few more buttons, but still pretty simple. And for the Roland FP30, under here, you have maybe 10 or so. Uh, buttons that are lit up with LEDs. However, all three of these instruments have a lot of different sounds and a lot of different features. To change the sounds on the ES110, there's two ways you can do it. One way is you can hold the button down and push a white key that corresponds to a certain sound, but you can also just keep pushing the button over and over again and it'll cycle through the bank of tones, which I really like, and that's the typically the default method I use when I select sounds on the ES110. On the P125, to change your sounds, you can simply hit the category button and you can see that red LED light that's changing. Hopefully you can see that. There's a red LED light here that indicates which variation you're on. And there's four variations for each sound bank. Down here on the Roland FP30, kind of like the Kawaii ES110, you can hold your category button down and push a key to change the note. However, unlike the Kawaii, you can't just keep hitting the button over and over again and have it cycle through. The only way to access that sound, those sounds by only using the instrument itself is by pushing down that button and then pushing a key to change the sound. And the Kawaii ES110 only uses the white keys. Those are the only places the sounds are located. On the FP30, the sounds are located on both the black and the white keys. So there's quite a few more sounds on the FP30 um, than these other two. 
um, but it's a bit more annoying to change. There is also an app you can use with the FP30X, and I've heard kind of mixed results about it. I haven't tested it myself. Some people say it's kind of buggy and crashes all the time and just isn't great. And it's also not ideal to to have a digital panel that's much more convenient to access with an app than it is with the instrument itself, because someday, although it may not seem like it, someday apps and iPads and things someday will become obsolete. Who knows how long that will be, but then when that day does come, the FP30X will permanently be very annoying to use. What else is there to talk about? You know, honestly, can't really think about too much. Actually, I just did the speakers. So. What are the speakers like on all three of these? Well, the design that each three, each company has gone with has been slightly different. What Yamaha has gone with is a pretty traditional uh, style. They've got two small speaker grills up here that are directing sound directly at the performer, and I believe they have, yep, I can feel the grills down here. They also have some bigger bass speakers that are facing downwards towards the ground. So that is a common theme we'll see in all three of these. All three of these have speakers that fire towards the ground, but the main difference is here that the Yamaha has dedicated speakers that fire up through little, I believe these are metal grills. Yeah, they feel like metal, little metal grills that direct the sound right at the performer. The Kawaii ES110 has a kind of a similar style. You've got the speakers underneath, at least I think you do. Let me see. Yeah, I feel them back there. Um, you've got some speaker grills down beneath that fire sound down, and you've also got some very slim little slits up top that are directing sound somewhat up towards the uh, performer. If there's one thing I don't like about the ES110, it definitely is the speakers. I think they could use some improvement. Compared to the other two, they actually do sound a bit more thin and not super present. But we'll talk more about the sounds later on in the video. Finally, down here on the bottom, we have the Roland FP30X, which only has downward firing speakers. However, compared to the Roland FP30, the old version of this, the FP30X now has bigger speakers, and they do seem to have a bit more volume and fatness than I remember, but they don't have the same presence and just well, presence is the best word I can use to describe. They don't have the same presence and crispness of sound that the Yamaha P125 does. Uh, but having said that, they are quite loud. The bass end actually does sound pretty good for most tones. And as a whole, the FP30X speakers are a bit better than they were on the FP30X. I mean, sorry, on the old FP30. But I do think if they had upward firing speakers that directed sound right at the performer, that would make the FP30X sound really, really good. And now I think it's time to talk about the playing experience and what it's like to perform on these instruments. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play Scarlatti's keyboard sonata K1, and I'm kind of going to botch it a little bit. What I'm going to do is it's typically a, it's a binary sonata, and you play each half twice. You play the first half. There's an optional repeat. You can take play the first half again, and then rinse and repeat for the second half. Play the second half through, repeat it, and end the piece. So what I'm going to do is add a third repeat in there. So I'm going to play the first half on this instrument, play it again up here, and play it again up here. Then we're going to go back down to the bottom, play the second half of the sonata down here, then again up here, and then again up here. So it's going to be very long, um, but we're going to see how this goes, and hopefully you all enjoy hearing the sound difference between these. It's going to give you a good example of what each instrument sounds like, and also a comparison between all three. So let's check that out. Thank you. 
So that was Scarlatti's keyboard sonata K1 played on all three of these instruments. Again, just a reminder, first half played on all three, second half played on all three. So perhaps you may have noticed a little difference there in the quality of performance on all three of those um, instruments, but I think now it's time to talk about the action of all three of these, as well as a couple of gimmicks often used in the keyboard industry. Something you'll often hear people say and talk about when they're talking about the FP30X and when they're talking about the Yamaha P125 is that people will often complain that the white keys on the Yamaha P125 have a smooth, shiny texture and that it's unrealistic, whereas whereas the Roland FP30X has a textured, um, slightly off-white key tops that emulate the feel of natural ivory. Um, and although the key tops of the FP30X do indeed have an off-white texture and they do have a textured key top, it doesn't really simulate the feel of actual ivory, and I don't notice really much of a difference at all in the the tactile feedback of the key tops of any of these instruments. Um, the FP30X just feels like a key top, and the P125 just feels like a key top, and the ES110 just feels like a key top. Uh, the ES110 also has a very slightly kind of like a satin uh, sort of a finish. Um, which, if I had to choose a key top texture, that's probably my favorite one, but again, it really doesn't make a huge difference. Um, it just kind of depends on what you like, because the shiny gloss will gather fingerprints, so that is a negative that of a, uh, you know, a visual aesthetic um, negative of this instrument. The other two won't really have fingerprints on the keys. However, with a modern acoustic piano, this shiny white plastic is the type of key top you're going to find. Uh, you're not going to find natural ivory or any other type of of, you know, organic material on the key tops of a modern acoustic piano. Um, so the textured off-white keys are cute, uh, but at the end of the day, they're really nothing more than a gimmick. If you personally have found that the, you know, the ivory simulation keys of the FP30X are just magical and they make you play so much better, that's wonderful. But for me, I don't really notice much of a difference, and if you blindfolded me, I based on the feel of the key tops alone, I probably couldn't tell you which keyboard was which. Something else I wanted to talk about is the simulation of escapement, also known as let off. This is another feature you'll see in some digital pianos. The cheapest digital piano that you can find that has a simulated escapement that I know of would be Roland's FP10X, but that uses the same action as the FP30. Actually, it's not the FP10X, it's just the FP10. Uh, but the FP30X also has the same uh, PHA4 action. So what escapement is, is on a real acoustic piano, when you push the key down, the hammer is going to move up strike the string, but if it stayed against the string, it would mute the string. So the escapement allows the hammer to fall back and escape from the string, and then that will allow the hammer to strike again. But the main deal with escapement is that it makes the hammer fall away from the string and not mute and block the tone. So when you play a real acoustic piano, if you gently push the key down, you'll feel this kind of a little bump, a little uh, a little notch at the end of the key uh, of the key's travel, and you'll also feel a similar kind of a notch in the travel of this instrument too. However, when you're playing a real acoustic piano, what you don't really notice that notch when you're actually playing. And in a digital piano, the way that notch is simulated, that kind of that let off escapement feel, is by a little rubber nub that is um, basically rubbed on by a component in the action. Uh, that's how Roland, I'm sure, does it here. That's how I know Kawhi does it in their full scale RH3 action. And it's kind of debated whether or not that's actually useful and actually um, purposeful. One thing that I find interesting that I always mention when I talk about escapement is that when Nord used Kawhi's RH3 action in their new Nord Grand, the only thing they altered in the action was to remove the escapement. Um, because I guess Nord felt that having that escapement in there wasn't beneficial to the action. And when I've played the RH3 action in the past, I've also felt that I didn't like the way the escapement felt. Now, whether or not the escapement on the Roland uh, PHA4 action Action is one of the reasons I don't particularly like the way the action feels. I'm not exactly sure, but that is just an example of why I think that escapement is kind of a bit more of a gimmick than an actual feature that you should really pay that much attention to. While some people believe that faux ivory key tops and simulated escapements will make an action feel more like a piano and therefore more realistic, 
strangely enough, that case isn't actually always true. In my personal opinion, the two digital pianos here that have the uh, more superior action are the two that don't really have simulated ivory key tops and the two that don't actually have simulated escapement either. Of these three, the two instruments that I think have the better action would be the Kawaii ES110 and the Yamaha P125. I really like the action on both of them and I think both of them definitely have their positive aspects. The Roland FP30X does also also have positive aspects too. One thing that I like about it is how the key actually feels on the way down. Although I have said that the simulated escapement on other instruments seems to be negatively affecting the performance. I'm not really sure that it is here or not. It could be, but I'm not convinced that it is. And the weight of the action when you're going down actually feels very nice and mechanical. However, the problem is when the action comes back up, in my opinion. And you also may have realized that there actually is perhaps a method to my madness as to which instrument is is at which position. Something I've done in a lot of my uh, my digital piano reviews is when I'm stacking two of them on top of each other is to tilt one of them downward so I can more easily access it. However, what this does is because the mechanism of both acoustic and digital pianos is reliant on gravity to reset the mechanism of the action, what this does is it actually will decrease the, uh, the effectiveness of the action. A lot of the times if you tilt digital pianos downwards, the action will become much more slow to respond and it will feel really bad. So what I've done here is I've taken the instrument that I feel has the most inferior action and I've put it on the bottom and I've given it the fairest playing field. It is at a very slight downwards angle. I'm honestly not sure why I left that there, um, but nonetheless that isn't actually affecting the instrument um, all that much. The P125, which I think has the better action for myself personally, I put at the angle so that I can um, play it better, and the Kawaii ES110 is at even a steeper angle. And I believe that the um, this angle is somewhat affecting uh, the way the keys are traveling upwards. However, even though the Kawaii ES110 is at the largest disadvantage, I think that it may be the best playing digital piano here. And again, that's because of the way the keys will return. As a test before I set up the video, I actually had the FP30 up on top at the same angle the Kawaii ES110 was at, and the, the keys were coming back noticeably slower. So not only does the action not respond ideally in my opinion on a flat surface, but when you put it at an angle like this, it begins to really stumble and, um, and crumble. So the problem in my opinion with the FP30 is that the keys aren't responsive enough on the way up. On the way down, I think everything feels pretty good. I like the heavier feel of the FP30. That is more similar to what you might find on a real acoustic piano, but perhaps it's that heavier weight also that is hindering the FP30 and making the notes come up a little bit slower than ideal and making them a bit slower to respond. It would be interesting to film these with high-speed cameras and count how many milliseconds it takes for the keys to return. You might actually find something interesting, but I don't have a phantom slow-mo camera, so I can't do that. But nonetheless, that is my opinion of why the FP30X feels a bit more sluggish and a bit less responsive than the Yamaha P125 and the ES110. Now again, nothing is perfect in the digital piano world, and both the Yamaha P125 and the ES110 have a couple of very small flaws that some people might consider to be a deal breaker. I personally don't. I think they feel great. But some people, if they want to be as nitpicky as I am of the way the keys are responding, may look to these minor flaws of the ES110 and say, I don't want to buy it because the action is a little bit more noisy than the... Uh, FP30X, which has a very quiet action, and that is true. The ES110 does have a noisier action than the other two. I have talked about that. But I think that the way the ES110's action feels and the way it plays is weirdly piano-like. The downwards um, attack of the action is a bit lighter than I personally would prefer. Most acoustic pianos would be heavier than this, but the way the instrument responds to your input is actually very piano-like. When you play it quietly, when you play it loud, the way the instrument responds, when you tell it to make a higher note sing in the melody, it does so. And although the other two are capable of doing this too, the ES110 just somehow feels a little bit better when I play it. The very small nitpicky thing about the P125 that I mentioned that some people might not like is that the action on the way down does feel a little bit more springy and a little bit more resistive, and in that sense a little bit less piano-like than the other two. But again, if you remember what I said that despite simulating ivory key tops and escapement and things like that, just because it has all those aspects and technically on paper perfectly replicates a digital piano, uh, an acoustic piano, doesn't necessarily mean it's the best action. And although the 
action, to my opinion, feels a little bit more springy and a bit less realistic on the way down on the P125. There is nothing else wrong with it. The keys, um, also the keys do get a little bit heavier in towards the back. That is another thing that some people might not like. The FP30 actually is pretty consistent. Uh, front to back, but the action is heavier and as a whole less responsive, and the Kawhi EOS 110 also gets a slight bit heavier towards the back, but really not that much at all. Let me see. Let me turn the volume down, and I'll play with it a bit, so I'm not... Let's see here. Only slightly. It gets only slightly heavier in towards the back. The P125 definitely does get heavier in towards the back. And then the FP30, I've got to hold this button down instead of the slider to make the volume go all the way down. Let's see here. Mm, it might get a little bit heavier in towards the back. Just slightly. Kind of like what the ES110 does. The ES110 gets a little slight bit heavier in towards the back. And the FP30, I think, also does the same amount of heaviness in towards the back. So all of them get slightly heavier in towards the back of the key, which is actually more important than you might think if you're a new piano player and you're thinking, why would I ever be playing the keys way back here at the back of the key? It actually does happen a lot if you're playing big chords, even like that. It's not even really a real chord, but you'll notice that my pinky finger is in, is out towards the tip of the key, whereas my middle finger is more towards the center of the key. And with certain chords, like this one, for example, on F minor something chord, <laughs> uh, you would be, you'd find here that the, um, it's, a, it's an F minor major chord. Um, you would find here that the your second finger is very far in towards the back of the key and your thumb is more towards the tip of the key. So certain big chords, certain things like that, will have you playing in more towards the back of the key. So let's turn the volumes on all three of these back up again and resume performing on them. I think that's about everything I wanted to say about the actions of all three of them, although none of them are 100% perfect. I definitely prefer the Kawhi ES110 or the P125 action to the Roland FP30X because the action of both is very, very responsive. And I think I mentioned earlier in the video, I know I'm talking forever about the actions, but it's very important. Um, you may have remembered me saying earlier in the video that something along the lines of you heard a performance difference on the three. And to me, to my opinion, um, my performance on the FP30X with that Scarlatti um, Sonata was more clumsy than it was on the ES110, particularly the second movement I thought was very nice on the ES110, whereas it wasn't so hot down here on the FP30X. And a lot of that is because of the um, the sluggishness of the keys. And again, notice the ES110, although I prefer it, it has every disadvantage going against it. It's at an angle, so the action theoretically isn't working at its what theoretical perfectness. And also, it's way up here. No one ever plays the piano way up here. In all, in all regards, the FP30X has the best playing field, and the ES110 has every disadvantage being thrown against it, and yet I still feel that the ES110 feels better than the FP30X. So interesting things to note. Um, I re actually recently got a comment talking about the Roland FP30X and the supernatural sound engine uh, that Roland used in it. And one, the commenter who left a video, I think it was on the original review I did of the FP30X, stated that the supernatural modeling uh, has, you know, really incredible sympathetic resonance and it sounds amazing and, uh, you know. Should we compare that? Let's compare Roland's supernatural modeling to whatever Kawhi has decided to use in their instrument. Personally, I think one is better than the other, and I'll tell you why in a little bit, but let's just play some stuff up here in the treble with the pedal down and listen to the way the instrument uh, simulates the natural reverberation of the notes throughout the, the synthetic strings of your, the piano that it's trying to emulate. All right, let's do this. Let's play it again. We'll do note by note and we'll listen to the differences here.
So what are your thoughts? Which one do you think sounds more authentic? Well, I'll tell you which one I think sounds more authentic. But first of all, I have to describe, in case some of you don't know, what sympathetic resonance is. On a real acoustic piano, when you push the damper pedal down, all the dampers that keep the strings from vibrating lift up, which then allows all the strings to vibrate. When you play any note in the piano, the vibration created by that one string will also sympathetically vibrate many of the other strings in the instrument. You can really hear this effect in the treble. If you have an acoustic piano, go home, push, or if you're at home, walk over to your piano, push the damper pedal down, and even if you don't know how to play the piano, do this and listen to it. Push the pedal down and just plonk any key up here in the treble. Just do this. And just listen to the way the note resonates. I pushed the wrong pedal so it didn't actually resonate, but do that with the pedal down and you'll hear what I mean. You'll not only hear the note that you play, but also others vibrating in harmony. So that's what sympathetic resonance is, and that's what many digital piano makers attempt to emulate in the high treble. Some makers even go further and they'll simulate all kinds of other things where like if you, uh, if you hold, if you push one note that's an octave lower and then you hit one note, you'll also hear the echo of that note you played in this note. I don't know if these do that or not. Um, that is also something a real piano does. But what I'm talking about here is just the overall sympathetic resonance. When you hold the pedal down and everything is free to vibrate, what's it sound like? So, when you listen to the Roland FP30X that has the supernatural sound engine, what you hear is kind of the same sort of sound that's Almost to me, it almost sounds like it's copy pasted over and over again from note to note. Take a listen. Listen carefully. Do you kind of hear that white noise that's behind each note that I'm playing? I do have the pedal pressed down this time. Um, that white noise is simulating the sympathetic resonance. But if you listen carefully, it sounds exactly the same for each note. Now, you will find that effect on a real acoustic piano as well, but the difference is that the sympathetic resonance only starts to sound kind of woody and the same note to note in the very high extremities of the instrument. Um, you won't really find that sound in this range of the instrument, which is kind of interesting. If we take a look at the Kawhi ES-110 and play that same range and listen to the sympathetic resonance, we'll hear something totally different. Hear how, once again, we hear this white noise, for the lack of better terms, uh, behind each note that I'm playing. Here's compared to it with no pedal. Here's with pedal. But the difference is that that white noise, for the lack of better terms, is almost, it's pitched to that note. It's, it's mirroring the echo of that note as the sound decays. It's not just the same static... unchanging sound behind each note. It's dynamic. It changes with each note. Here's a C. <laughs> I messed up the pedal. I told you I'd do that. Here's an E. You can hear that E resonating throughout the rest of the instrument when you have the pedal down. Here's a G. That is why one of the reasons why I love the Kawhi ES-110 so much. Um, and if we get up here into the higher register, then you'll start to hear that samey, samey, white noise, wooden type of tone that, you, that we're hearing down here on the uh, FP-30. Hear that kind of wooden attack sound that's decaying through there? You can also still hear the resonance of each pitch as well, but you'll also hear that kind of woody attack tone that we're getting in this register. Here, how it kind of sounds the same for each note up in that last octave up here. Whereas down here, it also sounds the same for each note. If we go lower than that up here in the S110. You can hear the echoes of the other string sympathetically resonating that one pitch um, with some impurities in there too, which it just sounds really, really good. And that's part of the reason I love the sound of the ES-110. The Roland FV-30 just isn't doing as good of a job of that. So although there, I, that's why I'm not super, one of the reasons I'm not super impressed with, you know, 
the Roland thing, the whole modeling engine. I'm not entirely convinced yet. I think what Kawhi is doing up here is working wonders and sounds quite authentic, and what Roland is doing down here sounds okay. You wouldn't hear that in a mix, but in a solo piano performance, you're playing slow, gentle classical music up here, you'll definitely hear that sound. Like, it sounds okay, but to me, this just sounds a lot more alive and lively and vibrant and authentic. Now, how about the Yamaha? Let's take a look here. I haven't actually looked too deep into it. It's just that the Kawhi ES110 really stands out to me as having super strong resonance. Let's check out the Yamaha and see where that falls in between the two. It's kind of a blend between the two. You can kind of hear that kind of white noise sound between each note, but you can also gently, subtly hear... It's not as obvious and realistic as the Kawhi, but you can definitely kind of hear the sound of the note that you played resonating throughout the rest of the instrument. So as a recap on the resonance issue, the Roland FP30X doesn't have very good sympathetic resonance, despite what people online in YouTube comments have told me. The Yamaha P125 has pretty decent sympathetic resonance, although it's not as nice as the resonance in the ES110, which of these three, and if anything in the sub $800 price class, the ES110 is crowned king in terms of the realism of the acoustic piano tone. Uh, the resonance, as, you, as you've heard in the ES110, is just astounding. It's excellent. But now let's move on to talking about some of the other tones, finally. Now, all three of these do have different piano sounds, acoustic piano tones in them. Uh, what you heard earlier was the default piano tone. But I think I'm going to skip past the other piano tones, because for all intents and purposes, most of them are usually just EQ'd versions of the original piano sound, and we'll move on to the default electric piano tone. So to achieve that on all three, you just hit the electric piano button once, equally simple on all three. And now we should have a Fender Rhodes type of tone on all three of them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off on the Kawhi ES110. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to try playing a little bit of uh, one of Schubert's impromptus, Opus 90 number 2, I think. And we're just going to play and kind of loop a section of it over and over again and go from the top keyboard to the bottom section, or to the middle keyboard, to the bottom keyboard, and we will see how that goes, and we'll just compare the road sound. Um, but before I do that, I will play a little ditty that references a very popular uh, piece of music that was written for the roads, and we'll do that first before we play Schubert, which doesn't really belong on the roads, but I think sounds kind of nice on the roads. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the FP30X once again was kind of hindering me there and my hands were getting very, very tired after playing that on the FP30X. I was fine on the EOS 110, I was fine on the P125, but as soon as I got down here onto the FP30X, the heavier, more sluggish action was really working against me. And my right hand was getting quite tired, which wouldn't really happen on even an acoustic piano. It has been a little while since I practiced that piece, so perhaps I, might, I need to work on my um, duration and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Stamina. But nonetheless, as soon as I got onto the FP30X, is really when that stamina drain really kicked in. Um, and that's partly why I messed up at the end because my arm was starting to really hurt. So the FP30X's action, I think, could use some improvement in my opinion. Um, it could use to be, if it was a little bit more snappy and more responsive, um, kind of like how the action on the P515 is, the Yamaha. It has a very heavy down weight, but it's so snappy coming back up that when you play fast, when you play that Schubert piece on it, it just plays like a dream, it plays really wonderful. So I feel like if Roland could emulate more of that kind of snappiness, that responsiveness, and still keep that more heavy kind of piano-like down weight, that might be pretty useful. Now, as far as the Rhodes tone itself is concerned, unfortunately, as much as I, as much as I like the ES110, I think between these three, it has the worst Rhodes sound, honestly. Um, a very characteristic, um, part of the Rhodes tone is the bark. When you dig into the note, it growls and, and barks, kind of. Um, and the ES-110 in certain ranges doesn't really do that. It's really not ideal. Um, the Yamaha has more of a bell-like tone, which is really nice. I like the sound of the Kawai's Rhodes up in this range right here. Um, but other than that, I think it's not the best Rhodes sound I've ever heard. You can see down on this range here, if you play the note harder, yes, it gets louder, but it doesn't bark. And we'll really see what that bark sound is like down here, but I believe the 125 also will bark. And the Roland FP30X also really does that too. The Roland FP30X's Rhodes Town Rhodes Tone, although a massive improvement over the old FP30X's Rhodes Tone, I think isn't quite perfect. I feel like maybe I like the Yamaha's tone more, but neither of them are bad, and I think perhaps at this point it would be more personal preference than actual decisiveness of which one is arguably better. I will say I like the bass of this more than the Yamaha. Another sound that all three of these instruments have is the emulation of a Wurlitzer 200 um, instrument. And oddly enough, while the Kawai has the weakest road sound, it for sure has the strongest whirly sound 
of all three of these. So let's check that out. To get to the whirly sound, all you have to do is push this button once. To get to the whirly sound here, I think we only have to push it once as well. Let's see. We have to push it twice. Um, that'll give us the whirly sound. And then down here, we have to do a button key combination press. And I don't have the user's manual in the ISO room, so we're just going to have to poke and find around until we get it. It's probably the second one. Let's see. It's the second one. I got lucky. So let's compare the whirly sounds on all three of these, which is another electric piano tone that I personally adore. So the Kawaii ES110 is emulating a Wurlitzer 200A, and I'd say so is the Roland, whereas the Yamaha is going after the brighter sound of the original um, Wurlitzer 200. However, despite me preferring the tone of the 200 to the 200A, Yamaha's emulation of said instrument isn't that strong, and I think the roles between the ES110 and the Yamaha have reversed here. Yamaha, uh, Kawaii's whirly tone is awesome, and Yamaha's whirly tone is not that great, and Ro Roland's whirly tone isn't bad. It's kind of a blend between the two with a very subtle sort of a tremolo. Something else I'd like to do here is to come is to combine uh, the ES110 with the Yamaha. That get, that gets pretty fun too. Which is a lot of fun. You can actually have a lot of fun with the Yamaha and the Kawaii ES110. Um, there's other electric piano tones in here um, as well, but I feel like maybe we should move on to the organs. This video is getting pretty um, long. So for organ tones in here, we have um, four of them in the Yamaha. We have a few of them on the Kawaii. I'm not actually sure how many we have. Let's pop through. There should be an organ. It is an organ. See, it's actually pretty easy to remember the sequence of four to five different button presses and remember which ones are which. I may eat my words later on and forget, but I nailed it there. Um, whereas with the Roland FP30, it's a lot more difficult for me to remember. Hmm, let's see. This G is going to be an organ. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. Is G an organ? Hey, it is an organ. Okay. But I don't remember which key gives me which organ tone, so... The organ tones are all three are actually pretty decent. Um, none of them are going to rival a real Hammond, although one feature that the Roland has that I actually really like is that if you push the electric piano button while on an organ tone, it will spool up and spool down the Leslie rotary speaker effect. This one already has a tremolo built in or the Leslie effect is on fast, but regardless, you'll still get the effect here. Now, although that probably isn't going to fool anyone into thinking it's a real Hammond organ, it does bring some life into the tone, and I actually really like that, and part of me kind of wishes that that uh, would have been implemented in the Kawaii and the Yamaha to some extent as well. Again, like with the Yamaha and the Kawaii, you can also combine, uh, honestly, either two of them with the um, Roland's organs too. <laughs> Thank you. 
I don't know what the heck I was doing with the glissando there at the end, but nonetheless, you can have some fun combining these two instruments. You can have fun combining the Yamaha and the ES-110, the Roland and the Yamaha, and also probably the Yamaha and the, sorry, the Roland and the ES-110. You can actually have a lot of fun by combining these three instruments. So although, like, I, like I've said, the FB-30X isn't 100% perfect, it is still possible to have fun um, with all three of these instruments, which is pretty cool. Um, there are a few different organ tones in each one. The FP30, I think, has more organ tones than the others. Um, we'll just quickly run through some of them. I think I'm on E, but I might be on F. I don't know. Let's just run through and just play a chord in each one. So here you've got quite a wide assortment of tone wheel organs as well as a few different pipe organs. Up here on the Yamaha you have a few different tone wheel organs. And that's not a tone wheel organ, that's a pipe organ. And up next is probably one of my favorite pipe organ sounds, one of, of my favorite pipe organ sounds in any digital piano that I have heard. Like, that's just awesome. That's really fun. And then up here in the quiet, we also have a few different organ sounds, too. We've got the one I've already... And we have that pipe organ sound, and I think that's it for organ tones up here. It is. That's a road sound. So we've got two organ sounds here. We've got four of them on the Yamaha. We've got quite a few more on the Roland FP30X. There's also kind of like a miscellaneous others category. Uh, on the Yamaha, it's, you've got a clavinet and vibraphones patch um, or section, which also contains a harpsichord sound. Then you have your strings and synth pad section up here on the Kawai. All of that is pretty much lumped into the others category. And it's kind of the same down here as well. You have the others category, uh, which features a bunch of different types of sounds. Um, so we can run through a few of those, but I don't think these, that's the main reason people are purchasing these instruments. The main reason people are getting these, I think, is for the digital piano sounds. And we'll come back to those in a little bit, because all three of these manufacturers have put a lot of effort into making their piano sounds sound good, but some have achieved that better than others. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So let's just run through some of these random other sounds and just see what the heck comes out. That's kind of been a brief overview of some of the things that these instruments can do. I will return to the acoustic piano sounds in a bit. Um, but both of them, let's see here. I think all three of them, this one doesn't, does it? 
does. This one, they, all three of them have a very basic recorder functionality, so you can make brief little recordings if you come up with a cool melody and you want to record it, or just record yourself playing a performance and then listen back to it and judge it yourself. You can do that on all three of these. All three of them also have a metronome. You've got a metronome down here. Let's make them all play at once, see what the heck happens. You've got a metronome here. You've got one here. And you've got one up here. Why I thought that was a good idea, I have no clue. Um, but nonetheless, you have metronomes on all three of these instruments. Um, you've got the record functionality, you've got demo functionalities. You can actually set registrations on the Kawai, looks like to me. And so I think as kind of a final takeaway, and if you're wondering which of these instruments is right for you, I think one big important thing to note is that the Kawai ES110 is a pianist's instrument. Um, the action feels, it has a very, it, the downward weight I think isn't incredibly pianistic, but the more important thing is the response you get from the instrument when you play, and that response is extremely pianistic. The action itself is also very responsive as well, it's very quick and fluid, um, and it feels really, really great. And then we've already heard the sympathetic resonance and the Kawhi's acoustic piano tone is just really glorious. And not only that, but if you remember back towards the beginning of the video when I showed you the damper pedals, the Kawhi hands down comes with the best pedal of this price class. Heck, it comes with the best uh, damper pedal. It comes with a damper pedal that rivals those that come with $3,000 instruments. Um, so that's pretty impressive as well. So you can clearly tell that Kawhi is really going for a pianist's approach here. You've got the piano style damper pedal, which I love. It hasn't moved an inch on the floor, by the way, and I've had to keep uh, constantly moving the other two stock pedals that come with these instruments. Um, so straight out of the box, Kawai is giving you a bit of a higher end piano experience. Whereas the Yamaha is kind of more of an all-rounded instrument. Not only do you have good piano sounds and a good action, you've also got some good electric piano tones in here. You've got some organ sounds and a few other things as well that give you a little bit of a wider tonal range. And the Roland also kind of falls into that category as well, although it's a little bit more annoying to use and the action isn't as um, responsive as the other two. The, However, I feel like Roland, if they made some more improvements, especially to the action as well as to the user interface, they would really have a a keyboard that would truly be extremely competitive with these. However, the new FP30X is definitely improved over the old FP30, which had a number of flaws that made it be very non-competitive with the 125 and the ES110. And although the new FP30X is still imperfect, it is a lot more competitive with the 125 and the ES110. So if you are a beginning pianist, and you're only able to play simple chords and very simple songs, the FB30X would certainly work well for you. But the big um, separator between, one of the big separators between the FB30X and either of these two is that if you were to continue to advance as a pianist and decide to get into playing classical music or perhaps even more technical jazz, um, where you can play fast runs and you know intricate solos, that's where the FB30X is going to start to decline. Uh, the FB30X is going to work fine for pop music and for simple jazz, but even in somewhat more advanced jazz, some of the stuff I'm doing in jazz ensemble uh, at, at, uh, at the university is requiring some really fast, intricate uh, chord changes and, you know, just intricate stuff. Percussive kind of, you know, grooving on the keyboard and the FP30 isn't going to be able to do that as well as the Yamaha P125 and the Kawai ES110. The action just isn't super responsive and super quick. I've talked about this at length. I know you're probably sick of hearing about it, but it's a very, very important thing to know about how the action feels on an instrument. And since you can't play this for yourself, I have to do my best to describe it. So. If you're a beginning pianist, all three of these are going to work well for you. But if you're an intermediate to advanced pianist, one of them isn't going to work as well as the other two for you. Uh, the ES110 feels amazing, the Yamaha P125 feels awesome to play, and then the Roland FP30 not as much. The, the, eight, the sub $800 price class is, is pretty much where you start to get these more professional level instruments. Uh, you know, under $500, under $400, uh, you get instruments that are okay, but they're not really going to be super, uh, what's the word, super well-rounded, super amazing, and really professionally usable. But in this price class, you're getting into the instruments that are really genuinely professionally usable and that actually have some really amazing qualities about them. ES110, fantastic. Yamaha P125, awesome. And although the Roland FB30X does have some redeeming features, for example, like I said earlier, the action is a little bit quieter um, than these other two. As a whole, I wouldn't recommend the FB30X if you're an advanced or intermediate pianist. It's just, it's going to be limiting. It's going to be harder for you to play 
than this instrument or this one. That's my thoughts, that's my feedback, and hopefully you all have enjoyed this review of these instruments. Uh, it's been a lot of fun making this video. I've been interested to do it ever since the launch of the Roland FP30X happened, and I've been really curious to see how the in, the added and improved tones in the FP30X really would stand and compete against these three. Another nice feature with the FP30X is you've got direct line outs now, so that is truly compatible, uh, compatible and competitive with the other two instruments here, and that's how all three of these have been recorded and throughout this whole video you've been hearing the internal sounds um, through the direct line outputs. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I've talked a long time. I went way more in depth than I thought I would, but hopefully you all still enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, you might want to go check out my channel. I've got lots of cool videos of digital pianos, acoustic pianos, and all kinds of other cool stuff too. So if any of that sounds cool, you might want to think about subscribing. If you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.